Toxics of Freedom from Islam. We're going to look at the prayers that are provided to set people free from the Dhimma Pact. Uh, on page 97 of uh, Liberty to the Captives, there's a list of some of the symptoms uh, that the Dhimma is associated with. These are the uh, psychological or spiritual attributes that are connected with um, the whole system of being surrendered to Islam and living under Islam as a non-Muslim. And this includes um, hurt and fear, intimidation, a sense of shame at, at being um, guilty, which is one of the, the, the messages of Islam, you're, you're liable to, your, to die. Um, feelings of guilt, feelings of inferiority, it's the whole system is meant to make you feel inferior, and resulting from that would be self-hatred and self-rejection. Uh, hatred of others, uh, it arises out of feeling rejected yourself. Uh, depression and um, lack of will, really. Remember the, that um, Islamic scholar who wrote, wrote about causing the dhimmi to put his soul to death and having no desires and no hopes. Um, also, deception. In order to survive, uh, dhimmis often have to lie. They, their testimony is invalid, after all. Um, they're in a very vulnerable position. They're humiliated. There's withdrawal, isolation, and silence. They're very reluctant to speak up. In fact, in the West, sometimes people from Dhimmi backgrounds uh, find it quite, uh, they have, there's a check in them against getting involved in politics and getting involved in, in public, um, public witness because of the effects of, of, of this system. So then I give verses of scripture which affirm the truth. And if I was taking someone through this ministry personally, I would, I would take them through the scriptures that explain how God's love overcomes rejection, that have we have an inheritance in God that's not fear, that we're called to live in freedom, that our bodies belong to God, that a blood price has already been paid for us. We don't have to pay another blood price for ourselves in the form of the jizya. I'd also affirm that men and women are equal and that one group's not superior over another and that we have unity and comfort in the cross. We have the power of the Spirit to understand and declare the truth. We don't have to be subject to lies. We also have an authority in Christ to overcome shame. We don't have to be subject to shame. We also have the right to educate ourselves about these matters. We don't have to be ignorant about Islam. We also have authority to speak the truth with boldness. We can have confidence in God's word. We're not defenseless. We're spiritually armed. We're strong. We consider it a joy to suffer, so that suffering doesn't intimidate us. The cross also destroys all of Satan's powers and specifically destroys the pact of the Dhimma. And so these are all designed to really encourage the believer to have confidence in what's happening and what they need to do. I was uh, presenting the gospel to a group of Muslims and then I asked them to renounce Islam and one man among them couldn't physically say the words. In fact, as we began to renounce um, Muhammad, he couldn't do that. And he began to shake and he said, I feel really distressed and embarrassed because I haven't followed Islam for years. I don't know why I can't say these words. I said, oh, well, I'll pray with you. And I, I went with him and I strengthened his faith and I reminded him of his authority in Christ. And uh, he, he reminded himself of the truth. We declared it as it were to the spiritual realm. And then he was able to renounce Islam and he was able to say the prayers. And after that, he was very much more settled, able to participate in worship, which had caused him difficulties before. So it's quite important to affirm these truths and to remind ourselves of them before we, we pray about matters such as this. And then there is um, the prayers of confession. That's important to acknowledge. There's a repentance for the ways we've sinned and turned away from God, the way that we've abused or dominated others. We're praying about a system of abuse and domination, so we should confess if we've been an abuser and ask forgiveness um, for our sins in that respect. Then there is these declaration and renunciations, and uh, they uh, can be, should be spoken aloud together with uh, others that are praying with you and, and, and supporting you in that. And you'll notice that they're very specific. There is a rejection of fear. There's a rejection of the demands of Islam. There's also a repentance for the sins of the ancestors. Even though they were compelled to submit to the Dhimma, they, they in a sense partnered with it in order to survive. And we ask forgiveness for anything of that. And um, there's a rejection of the, specifically, I renounce the blow on the neck in the jizya payment ritual. That's quite important because you're rejecting the ritual and all that it represents. 
and the curse of decapitation, the curse of death, is also rejected and renounced so that it no longer hangs over your head. So you're breaking these curses off, declaring, agreeing with Scripture that the Vimma Pact is nailed to the cross of Christ, that the spiritual principles of the pact are, ex are exposed, disarmed, defeated, and disgraced. So that's from, from uh, the Colossians as well. You're applying Scripture to this. And then there's a specific um, renunciation of many of the symptoms of living under Islamic rule, such as the gratitude. You remember that the, uh, the commentators said that the Mis were meant to feel grateful to Islam for sparing their life. So um, you reject that sense of um, feeling grateful to Islam. And they're also meant to feel guilty uh, they were, uh, because they were under a sentence of death. So you reject that. You reject deceptions and lies. Um, non-Muslims are meant to be silent about their faith. They're not meant to witness. So we renounce that and reject that. We renounce all agreements to keep silent. We declare that we have the right to speak. We also cancel all curses spoken against us and break the curse of death, which is part of the, the jizya ritual, and declare that the curses of death don't have power over us. We claim an inheritance in Christ instead of an inheritance in Satan's kingdom. We reject intimidation, manipulation and control, abuse and violence, fear, and lots of different fears associated with the Vima Pact, the fear of being robbed, the fear of being raped, um, the fear of being isolated, of losing family, and so on. Uh, the fear of Islam and the fear of Muslims also rejected and renounced. And then there's a declaration of the Lordship of Christ, that he rules, that we're not... You see, you're rejecting... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And then, there's a, then there is an affirmation of the Lordship of Christ. Um, you're declaring that you submit to Jesus as Lord in every area of your life because the Vimma Pact involves a false sovereignty, a submission to a, a principle of this world which is dominating and damaging. So part of the response to that is to affirm the true sovereignty of Jesus in every area of your life. We also reject humiliation, renounce shame. Uh, we ask for forgiveness for ourselves and for our ancestors of hatred or unforgiveness towards Muslims and repent of the sins of the church or of church leaders. There's a rejection of alienation and a declaration that nothing can be able to bring charges against us. We declare praise and thanks to God our Father. We commit ourselves to be living witnesses. We're not ashamed of the cross. We're not ashamed of the resurrection. Um, these are all declarations of our boldness in, uh, in our faith and uh, claiming our, our, our place really in the kingdom of God. And also, when you do this kind of ministry and you're praying for people, you should always bless them. Ask them to be filled with every good thing where there's been sorrow or pain, that they would have authority and boldness and a love for Muslim people, a passion to share the gospel. And uh, so there's, uh, that's the structure of the prayer. It's written carefully to match all the different attributes of the Dhimma Pact and the psychological attributes, including the ritual. And so... Uh, the prayer needs to be uh, comprehensive so that you sort of deal with every single issue because different people will be affected with in different ways. One might be afraid, another might feel ashamed, another might would not feel able to speak up. And so the prayer is, is, is as comprehensive as possible. It might take quite a while to go through that. If I was um, doing that with someone individually, I would then, having prayed the prayer with them, and I'd say the prayer with them, I'd then pray for them as the Lord leads, in asking the Lord to strengthen them and to heal them. Um, if there's something in their own life that they've ex experienced specific traumas or specific issues that they're aware of, then it's good to pray through that as well. So that's the prayer um, for announcing the Vimma Pact. It's, uh, um, it's, it's quite comprehensive and uh, just encourage you to use that with your ministry teams. If you've got a group of people doing evangelism to Muslims, it's good to declare this because these are the very uh, spiritual powers that you're struggling against when you're uh, sharing the gospel with, with Muslim people. Um, the Shahada, which is the other um, covenant, I have actually developed three prayers for this. And this is uh, the impact of Islam on Muslims. A different set of uh, problems from those for Dhimmis. So there is um, violence and warfare, murder, enslaving others, revenge and retribution, very big part of his Islamic emotional worldview, hatred, including um, anti-Semitism, hatred of women. Uh, the Quran has many anti-Jewish comments in it. Muhammad felt rejected by the Jews who didn't accept him. 
and he responded with many curses. Uh, abuse, um, shame and shaming of others, intimidation, deception, telling lies, taking offense, self-indication, feelings of superiority, misrepresentation of God's character, the will to dominate others, uh, rape, and I've also included here witchcraft or the occult. So there's a, a list of the kinds of things that can be associated with Islam, according to Islam's own teachings, according to the life of Muhammad. I think we'll take um, a break there at that point before the last session.